just want to thank you for signing up for the Burrowing Owl Workday out at Powers Butte. Um, a couple words. We typically, when we meet on site, we'll gather the entire group together for an orientation. We're not going to do that this time for obvious reasons. And so we put together this video to go over some of the first steps that you'll have to take when you're building the burrows. Um, what we're going to be doing today on site is building artificial burrows for burrowing owls. Burrowing owls were once very common throughout the Phoenix Valley, now they're disappearing. Um, and one of the reasons that we're not seeing them anymore is that they're losing habitat. And these little owls do not dig their own burrows. Instead, they rely on fossorial mammals like ground squirrels, prairie dogs to dig burrows. So because there's not that many of those out there anymore, we're going to be doing the work of those fossorial mammals. We have a tubing that has a big round extension on the end that has to be covered with a chicken wire. It's also called poultry cloth. You insert the assembly so that the chicken wire lines up even with the big round one and then you're going to collapse it. So take the chicken wire and pull it together tight at the big end like this. And there's little ends that you bend over and those little ends hold the chicken wire together. You might have to take your gloves off to be able to get a good grip on the little wires. Once you've got those wires bent over, you need about five or six little ends bent over. Then the rest of it, you're just going to squish it together. So you can put, push more of those little ends together if you want to. It's a good idea. And then just, you have to have your gloves on. You're going to squeeze it real tight like this on the open gap end and fold it over like this. When you're done, the chicken wire is nice and tight against the tubing. Just like that. That's how you do it. So starting with the rebar driven in about at the level of the top of the tubing and the chicken wire, pull the tubing out you pull the brick away, you're going to need a piece of wire, cut a piece of wire that's about equal to your outstretched arm. You're building a wire bridge that will secure the black tubing. Go to the middle of the wire like this. Put two wraps around one of the rebar, take them over to the other rebar, do the same thing. You want to make sure that these wraps are nice and snug. And then you're going to twist it like this. You only need about an inch of twist. Then the second part of the wire bridge, to do the same thing, you take an outstretched length of wire. Like this. And run this underneath the bridge that you built in the middle. And then you're going to put the tubing and the brick back. First you put the brick back, put this so that it's in the middle. You have the wire that you added underneath the rebar that goes through the chicken wire so that it's going to line up with the rebar on the other side. Like this. Feed that through. Take the other one and do the same thing. It's important that it goes through the chicken wire 
because this prevents predators from being able to pull the tubing away from the rebar. Once you have the wire through, put wraps around one direction with one wire, the other direction with the other wire, and then you're going to twist them together like this. Nice and tight. You, need, you only need about an inch of twist. And then to make sure that this wire stays down where it's supposed to be, you have two other wires that you brought up from down below. And you're going to twist those together like that. So you have two wires, two ends. Now this wire cannot come off. There's no way to get that tubing out. It's impossible to remove. Once you have it twisted, cut these wires off nice and close. Make sure that they go into the trash bag. I'm going to uh, prepare the drum, which is used for the owl burrow chamber. The tubing is going to go in through this hole, but we use a piece of wire to secure the tubing to the drum. The best way to do this is to turn the drum upside down like this. Take a piece of wire that, once again, is it's about three or four feet long. Cut it off. Beat it through the hole. Find, it, find the, the approximate middle of the wire, squish it a little bit, that helps if you pinch it, and then you want to put three wraps on. One, two, and three. So when you're done, you have three wraps, two ends sticking out, and you're going to use these to secure the tubing that's going to go through the hole. Now what we're going to demonstrate is how to put the marker on the tubing so you know how far the tubing is inserted so that it's not in too far and how to connect the tubing to the blue barrel so it can't be withdrawn. These are called whiskers. The whiskers are, can be changed in length so they'll fit around the tubing. You want to go to the third groove, like this, tighten, it, tighten up the whiskers so that they stick out equally on both sides. That's exactly how the whisker is oriented. Now we're going to put the tubing in there, like this. So right up against the edge of the blue barrel, so you know it's inserted the right distance. You're going to pull the wires up that you attached to the blue barrel previously. And all you, you don't have to wrap it around the tubing, you just have to get it down into the slot. Pull it tight and put a twist on it like this. correctly that you can't pull it out. It's, it's permanently attached. You cut the wires off. Okay, so now we're going to connect the two pieces of tubing together with an internal coupling. The piece of tubing that comes from the entrance usually needs to be fitted to another piece of tubing that fits exactly up to the other tubing and we use one of these couplings to do it. It's important that the yellow mark is always up when you're done. These can rotate inside the tubing. There's holes drilled on one side that's so the owl has a good grip on the slick plastic. So when you're done 
you want to make sure that you can see that yellow mark on the top. These are hard to insert. It takes a lot of force to push them together. Get one in, and you get the other one in. Just like that. And then when you're done, you can rotate that up to make sure that it's on the top side. There are a couple of safety hazards at the work site that's very important that you pay attention to. The most lethal one is the rebar. It's possible for you to get impaled by the rebar if you make the mistake and put it in a bucket. Some of you are going to want to put the rebar in a bucket and walk away or leave it like this, walk with it. That's really, really bad. You can fall down, become impaled on one of the rebars, or you leave it in place and somebody else falls on it. Just put the rebar on the ground. When you have to move the rebar, move it someplace, drop it on the ground. So the most important thing is stand sideways. Always be pay attention to where you are around the trench and don't stand too close. Really appreciate your help and your time. Um, a couple words about getting to the site. Please allow yourself um, from leaving Highway 85 probably about 45 minutes on a well-graded dirt road. Um, one of the most common things that happens is people underestimate the amount of time that it's going to take to get out on site. Our work days typically begin at 8 a.m. and end at noon. This particular work day may be extended to about 3 o'clock. Don't feel like you have to stay. We just have a lot of work to do. Um, if, you, if you do have time and you're able to stick around, we'd appreciate it, but leave when you need to leave. Um, and with that, I'll see you on the work site.